The golf subworld in the realms of general sports is not one you'd assume to be rife with drama, but as it stands, that simply isn't true. Or perhaps the lack of general controversy in the sport is the reason why an antitrust lawsuit against the PGA Tour is gaining such traction. Whatever it may be, we have a new update to get into. Here's all you need to know. First up, let's catch you up to speed. Earlier this year, 11 big-name golfers publicly sued the PGA Tour over its decision to suspend the players for participating in and playing the new live golf circuit, but well, you already knew that. Part of why this particular lawsuit blew up was because it was led by Phil Mickelson of all people. Yes, the six-time major champion, who according to an antitrust filing, cannot even apply for reinstatement until 2024. Joining forces with him were Open winner Bryson DeChambeau, European Ryder Cup veteran Ian Poulter, Matt Jones, Taylor Gooch, and Hudson Swafford, along with others. That's an impressive list of golfers, and given that their complaint assumed their suspension just to be a carefully orchestrated plan to defeat the competition, that is them. They believed the tour had threatened lifetime bans on players who participated in even a single live golf event. Their purpose, as we know, was to get the court to declare the sanctions imposed upon them null, and to also award them damages and attorney fees. Then in July, the U.S. Justice Department was announced to be investigating whether the PGA Tour even broke the antitrust law in fending off the live golf circuit. The live series has faced criticism in its own right, and for many reasons. Now, let's talk about how live golf also join the lawsuit. You see, if that was all, everything wouldn't have gotten nearly as messy as it is now. But before we get into that, we should talk about the things we've learned about Mickelson in association with the Live Series. You see, initiated by Saudi Arabia, to many, the series feels like a cheap attempt by the country to improve its image in front of a world that already berates its human rights record. Funnily enough, Mickelson was allegedly suspended by the PGA Tour in March for allegedly trying to recruit players to live golf, and his appeal was denied. This is funny considering how an unauthorized biography claimed that he'd apparently called the Saudis scary, but that he'd looked past their human rights record to apparently gain leverage with the PGA Tour. When he applied for reinstatement, he was denied, for he'd already participated in the Live Golf event once. And when he reapplied, he was forbidden from seeking reinstatement until 2024, for he'd gone on and played the banned event yet again. This was before PGA Tour had announced its decision to suspend all members who may be thinking about or had joined the series. But you see, Live Golf saw an opportunity. On August 27th, headlines started surfacing that stated that Live Golf itself had joined the players in their antitrust lawsuit against the PGA Tour after four golfers removed their names from the lawsuit. Apparently, they made an amended complaint against the tour and claimed that Live Golf was seeking punitive damages against the PGA Tour for its tortious interference with Live Golf's prospective business relationships. Now, let's talk about the big news. As of very recently, the judge overseeing the case ruled that Live Golf, Matt Jones, and others must disclose their pre-lawsuit communications log in the antitrust case. The U.S. District Judge ruled that the series and the players need to disclose and submit any communication amongst themselves and outside counsel about the Saudi League that happened before or after the complaint was filed against PGA Tours. Funnily enough, for all that talk about Mickelson leading the lawsuit, he was one of the first to withdraw his name on Tuesday morning a week or so ago. It's super insane given how Mickelson was basically the face of Live Golf in the case, and now with him voluntarily dismissing his case against the tour, Live Golf doesn't have too strong a leg to stand on, regardless of all that Saudi funding. He claimed that he didn't feel it necessary to stay a part of any further proceedings in that case. But that's not all. Taylor Gooch, Ian Poulter, and Hudson Swafford also removed their names from the lawsuit the same day. The lawsuit against PGA Golf, which started strong with a full 11 golfers, has now dwindled to a mere three, which includes Bryson DeChambeau, Jones, and Peter Uline. Of course, Live Golf did claim that nothing about the case had changed, which is where these communications come in. After being told by the court to reveal their private communications and discourse, the parties involved defiantly tried to be excused from logging in with this information, claiming it would be costly, time-consuming, and unduly burdensome. The tour argued otherwise, claiming that communication disclosure was necessary, and the U.S. District Court Judge Susan Van Kulen sided with the tour. According to her, discovery disputes are, by their nature, highly fact-specific, and the cases brought in by plaintiffs are in opposite in light of the fact of this case, and that the ruling included pre-filing communications with counsel retained in their litigation, while being time-consuming, will, in this case, is proportional to the needs of the case and appropriate under Rule 26. This, while being a victory for the PGA Tour, was somewhat of a win for Live Golf as well. The Tour decided to get an expert outside counsel to review Liv's communications. Apparently, though, according to Liv, this expert, supposedly unbiased, was a specifically identified attorney with a lengthy history of advising the PGA Tour. And since the Tour and the fledgling circuit are competitors, this could 
could give the defendant an unfair advantage. Van Kulen did respond to that if you're wondering. Simply put, she stated that the court usually gives the right of judgment to a party's selection of advisors and consultants and access to an opponent's confidential information. But since both parties, in this case, are direct competitors of each other, along with the attorney's non-specific advisory role to the defendant, the attorney therefore is not the counsel of the record, and the court will not include their proposed language in the protective order. Now let's talk about five takeaways from a pro caddy who followed his player to the Live Golf Series. To distract from all the drama happening right now with the PGA Tour and Live, the last thing you need to wonder is just how a pro caddy does it and what their life is like. And yet, there's something so intriguing about the prospect of learning what wisdom a golf caddy might have to impart upon us. Well, Golf Digest recently did a piece on this anonymous golf caddy who claimed that joining the Live Tour has been effing great. And here are five things they shared. Starting with number one, Norman's popular. Apparently, Greg Norman, the presumed problematic CEO of Live Golf, is a very invested man indeed. According to this caddy, he has something personal to say to everyone and make sure everyone on the pitch and behind it feels seen. According to them, no PGA Tour executive had ever done the same thing unless they wanted something in return. On to number two, ignore Saudi controversy. And about the big Saudi Arabia controversy? Well, ignoring all that noise is just part of the job, according to them. They claim that they were a globetrotter and have seen both the best and the worst of what a lot of the world has to offer. And if they started denying work and events because of what country it was in, or what club it was played at, or even if he was picky with who sponsors the events, well, then they simply wouldn't have had a work schedule. Next three, state of play is meh. So far, the state of the competition is pretty unremarkable according to them, and the atmosphere is dead. And even though there are crowds during the final round, they're not sure what they're watching, it seems. After that, number four, all about the money. They also revealed that Liv, as one would expect, is indeed all about the money. They have an agreement with their player, and it's not the standard 8-10% to of winnings in professional golf. Heck, they didn't even get any of his players' bonuses to join the Liv, but even so, he's taking home a life-changing amount of money and will get more in cuts and bonuses. In fact, if things go well, they're set to make more this year than they have in their three years working at PGA combined. Lastly, at number five, more players and caddies will leave the PGA. And finally, you should expect more players and their caddies to defect. So while they respect everyone who wants to stay away from Liv because of its general controversy, they know for a fact that half a dozen of their caddy friends are doing everything they can to find a way to live because it's an opportunity they can't afford to pass up. And that's all for this video. What do you think of the antitrust case? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed watching the video, be sure to leave a like and share the video. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications by pressing the bell icon to get notified every time we post a new video. And we will see you next time. Thank you for watching.